A coastal getaway, a barbecue. It's the Australian ideal. But imagine if one day you reached for a steak and ended up in emergency. My blood pressure had dropped, my tongue was swollen. With life-threatening anaphylaxis. You must be joking. I mean, who's allergic to red meat? It's called mammalian meat allergy, or MMA. Unheard of until a few years ago, it's on the rise up and down the eastern seaboard, with two cases now being diagnosed a week just in this area. But what's more astonishing is what causes it. We've now discovered it's triggered months, even years earlier, by a seemingly unrelated event, a bite from a tick. It's an incredible story of scientific detective work with implications for anyone who visits the coast. Oh, we have the highest prevalence in the world. Or ever has to remove a tick. And they are surprised when we tell them that probably the reason is because they've been removing the ticks incorrectly. The truth is, if you've ever been bitten by a tick, you may already have a mild version of MMA and not even realise it. When Joy and her husband Nick Cowdery bought this idyllic getaway 25 years ago, meat was just part of living the good life. Field masala, osabuco. Mm. As were ticks. There are a lot of ticks here. I would have been bitten every time we came here. In hindsight, there were early signs of mammalian meat allergy, but they were the kind of thing any of us would probably just ignore. When I looked back, I found that I'd had a number of um, gastrointestinal problems, but I'd never, ever put it down to um, something like meat. Then one day, Joy was making a beef casserole for a friend. So I tasted to see whether the meat was cooked. After just over an hour, I said to Nick, I really don't feel well. And with that, I started to itch all over bright red, my tongue was swollen. Very scary, uh, and obviously it was something that required immediate medical attention. A week after her brush with death, she was referred to a specialist to undergo an allergen test and went home to her husband with the shock diagnosis. Guess what? I'm allergic to red meat. And he said, you can't be. And I said, well, that's what the blood test showed. I needed to be convinced, finally. So we had an experiment. OK, let's try roast lamb tonight. It wasn't the best decision. At about one o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I was itchy all over. And I just very slowly, he started to go red. No more tests after that. It's not surprising people have trouble believing in Joy's tick-induced meat allergy because its discovery is so recent, many doctors still haven't even heard of it. And the person who made this astonishing link works here. She's immunologist cum allergy super sleuth, Professor Cheryl Van Noonan. Hi, how are you? Cheryl was working on Sydney's North Shore when she started to notice an unusual cluster of cases, of which Joy's was case number 23. I started seeing people who have a more unusual form of anaphylaxis in that they'd wake up in the middle of the night. Normally with anaphylaxis, you have the allergen, uh, be that peanut, prawn or penicillin, and then within half an hour, you're usually having quite a serious reaction. And so it's quite easy to go back to the probable provoking factor. But in these midnight cases, none of the usual suspects, like bed bugs, fit. So she decided to try looking at their last meals. Joy, did you bring in the ingredients of the food of that meal? Yes, I did. Good. Dr Van Noonan is unusual in that she does live meal tests. Instead of allergens from a bottle, Basically, she pricks the food and uses that for the skin test. This may be why red meat allergies in adults had never been picked up before. And to her amazement, her patients were allergic to pork, beef, lamb, even venison. And kangaroo and buffalo. And obviously, we then realised that this was all mammalian meat. 
But why? What would cause a person who loved meat suddenly to have such a violent reaction? And then she spotted it. All her patients had a history of tick bite. Could it be caused by ticks? I literally wouldn't believe it myself, but every time there was a middle of the night anaphylaxis, it would turn out to be mammalian meat after tick bite. You get up to about 20 people or so and you think, oh, good heavens, I've got to really do something about this. We've got to somehow bring this to the attention of my colleagues because these, the tick, when you look at the distribution, is all down the east coast of Australia and you can see the majority of our population is exposed by virtue of where they live or where they choose to do their recreation or even work. But how does a tick cause an allergy months later to a food like red meat? To find out, let's go catch some. What every tick hunter needs, some repellent and a state-of-the-art tick catcher. Our tick wrangler is entomologist Dr Stephen Doggett, who's about to shock me by busting a long-held belief. I see, so you're on the ground. I always thought that the ticks were up in the trees. No, in fact, that's actually a great misconception. It's a real myth. Yeah? Very rarely ticks climb more than about 60 centimetres because it just gets too dry for them. And But once they're on you, they can actually walk over the body and they can spend some time, two to three hours, before they find Ooh. a site to attach. It's a nice little park, this. I think it's lovely. And it looks like our tick trawling has delivered. So this is the adult stage of the paralysis tick, mm. the one that's so problematic for, for our pets and the one that can actually lead to the mammalian meat allergy. And here's how. Just look at these enormous mouth parts. Ticks feed on blood. So when they attach, they insert these under your skin and inject you with local anaesthetic, which is why you don't feel it at first. The trouble is, at that point, they're also injecting you with part of the blood of whatever animal they fed on before. And that blood, if it came from any mammal other than humans, contains a small sugar called alpha-gal. Other mammals have it, we don't. Alpha-gal is two galactose, or two sugar molecules, stuck together. And it forms part of every mammal except humans, great apes and old world monkeys. What's extra strange about alpha-gal is that it's a carbohydrate. Normally things that cause serious allergies are all proteins. But being processed by the tick makes this harmless sugar seem like something else. What I wondered was whether the tick bite could actually switch the human to being pro-allergy, and that's what we think is probably happening. So the tick bites a mammal and picks up alpha-gal. Now, once inside the tick, the alpha-gal binds to a tick protein to form a complex. When the tick then bites me, it's this complex that's injected straight into my bloodstream. Now, normally my immune system would just ignore the alpha-gal and attack the tick protein, but this time they're coming in together and my immune system suddenly goes, oh, that stuff, that alpha-gal, that's dangerous too. Our immune system has now been trained to react to alpha-gal. And it's found in all red meats. An immune system attack on the wrong target is what we call an allergy. A massive attack that threatens our whole system, that's what we call anaphylaxis. So how common is it? Oh, we have the highest prevalence in the world. Uh, other places where they consider it to be quite prevalent are uh, ten times less. And that probably uh, is due to the fact that our tick's very efficient at promoting the problem. A thousand cases of MMA have now been diagnosed up and down the East Coast, basically wherever ticks are common, which means moist coastal bush areas stretching up to 100 kilometres inland. Hotspots are around Sydney and also Noosa, but now doctors are becoming more aware of it, we are starting to see cases in Victoria. More importantly, there are no doubt thousands of people with low-grade MMA who don't know it yet, 
That's because, as was Joy's case early on, it just manifests as occasional nausea or diarrhoea, easily mistaken for a gastro bug. Well, if you do have intermittent gastroenteritis, you know, if you think you've had a, a funny meal every so often, then it might be worth your while taking meat out of the diet and see if those symptoms disappear. And then you should put it back in, see if those symptoms reappear again, and then do that a sufficient number of times until you're convinced that that was the cause. But it's not just meat allergy you have to worry about. A growing number of people are becoming allergic to the tick bite itself. And it's so severe, they end up here. Believe it or not, acute life-threatening anaphylaxis to a tick bite is now 25 times as common around here as a severe reaction to a bee sting. And it's a medical emergency. So it can happen within seconds or minutes of a tick being removed. 75% of people with tick anaphylaxis have a grade three or grade four reaction. Grade three is we can do great things for you with uh, adrenaline and oxygen. Grade four is we hope your will's up to date and we'll have a crack at it. So this is, these are very serious anaphylaxis that are occurring. Unlike meat allergy where alpha-gal is involved, this tick allergy is a reaction to a protein from the tick saliva itself, which is why it comes on so quickly and severely. Just pop your arm out for me. And interestingly, the people who have the meat allergy are a different group to the tick allergic. People have, have had bites for 20 years and then all of a sudden this year they'll come in with an anaphylactic reaction. Bit surprising to them, I imagine. Are people shocked when you explain what it is? They are, and also shocked when we tell them that probably the reason is because they've been removing the ticks incorrectly all that time. So are you saying that tick anaphylaxis could be prevented altogether if we just remove ticks the right way? Yeah, so if you squeeze the tick, then that causes the allergen to enter the bloodstream, which causes the anaphylactic reaction. Um, if you remove the tick correctly without squeezing it, then you don't have those problems. Unfortunately, most of us instinctively do the wrong thing. So you have a tick. How should you remove it? Here's my tick. Now, this is what most of us will do. We'll either scratch it off or reach for the household tweezers. Now, this is precisely the worst thing you can do. As you remove the tick, you squeeze it and all its contents go straight into your bloodstream. What they need to know is household tweezers are tick squeezers. So, what should you do? Well, you should go to the chemist and buy a spray containing ether. So, something like Wartoff or Medifreeze skin tag remover. Place the nozzle conveniently over the tick and spray. Feels cold. Freeze the tick and wait about 10 minutes for the tick to die. Once it's dead, you can just brush it off. Freeze it, don't squeeze it, would be our advice. So that will kill the adults. But what about the tiny ticks, the little larvae or nymphs? Now these are my little larval ticks, and for these I'm going to use a cream containing permethrin. Now this is basically the same kind of cream as you get for scabies. Just rub that in. Ticks will all die, and soon you'll be able to just rub them off. We dab them, don't grab them. Meanwhile, back at the lab... Bloody hell! I've got a tick! <laughs> this is not deliberate and it's really itching. OK, let's get the water off out, please. It's sizzling. I guess I wait for it to die now. Solid frozen. And to my surprise, the itch went away completely in an hour. This new method really works. As for Joy, she's not taking any chances these days. This is my tick protection gear. Um, I spray my body with red to begin with. Then I spray my clothes with Pomoxin. And then I'm ready to garden. And while Joy may no longer be able to eat red meat, she can at least still drink red wine. Not so all is lost. No. <laughs> so cheers to this beautiful place. Cheers. Oh, Thank cheers. you.
And for the latest advice on tick bite first aid, visit the Catalyst website.